Okay, welcome to That's What's Up Radio Show. My name is DJ Ali, aka Metal Con Junior. Uh, I hope everyone out there knows me. And uh, well, I expect you to know me, but if you don't know me, get to know me right now on That's What's Up Radio Show. How are you doing out there? You can see my face. I'm looking very, very exciting. I don't know about exciting, but I'm just looking happy. This is what happiness looks like. So let's get cracking. How's everyone doing out there today? I just want to say thank you so much for you know listening to this show. Uh, the show has been going on for a while. You know, we do have our great times and we do have our ups and downs. You know, but this is one of the greatest days of people's life. And I thank you. I thank everyone for being here, for being supportive, for you know, for everything that you've done so far in the lives of this show. That's what's up, radio show. I like to send a shout out to a lot of people. Actually, I don't know where to start. Uh, let me start by saying, Mr. Larry Oyekunle, Mr. Samson. Shout out to you, Mr. Sunday Adewusi. Shout out to you. Shout out to my brothers and sister. And um, shout out to all my brethren, Kasaski, hold tight, hold tight, Ada Snoop, hold tight, um, Dilba Authentic, DJ Abbas, hold tight, and hold tight, DJ Casey, and all the DJs are there, are days. I know everybody's going to be upset with me if I don't call your name, but you got to understand that this is a live show. When you're doing live shows, you can't remember everybody. Yeah, DJ T from Black Nine, shout out to you. You get me? You always have my back anytime. Hold tight, DJ Mosh as well. DJ Mosh in the building. That's my boy. You get me? Yeah, shout out to you. Shout out to everybody that, you know, is feeling the show. Shout out to everybody that's been supporting this show for a very, very long time. You know, what can I say? You know, you're the best. I owe you one. Actually, I owe you two, I owe you three, I owe you four, I owe you everything. You know, one day I hope I'll be able to repay you. Also, shout out to Miss uh, Ayan Badejo, that's all you consola, who is right here in London. And uh, she's doing a project at the moment. So, shout out to you. I hope you're getting on fine. She was at the um, Nigerian Embassy. She actually met with our high commissioner i can't remember his name <laughs> yeah and it's a famous famous person i don't know anyway let me go straight into the bloggers blog this is what the bloggers have been saying about everything around the world they talk about dogs they talk about human beings they talk about boko Haram, they talk about everything basically so i've just picked up a little thing you know that i think will be interesting to you for you to hear and know about you gave me last year november 2013 celebrity blogger linda ikeji <laughs> i think you know this lady trust me uh, she's making a lot of money and uh, what the bloggers are saying about this story is about the wristwatch that she's actually wearing trust me and they are comparing this wristwatch, you know, to uh, Jenny Vanange's wristwatch. And back then she said, Inyanya, Davido and Whiskey are not celebrities who own Rolex watches. What millions of Naira. Star actress Genevieve Naiji also owns one. Now, here's how I know. When I was in Dubai recently, I went into a Rolex store. Eh? just to window shop can't afford one and while looking around I saw this particular one and I fell in love with it asked how much it was and they told me $25,000 that's 4 million naira in Nigerian currency nah that's way too much for me oh. so I left the store and settled for something far less expensive so anyway here I was minding my own business as usual. Cough. <coughs> when I spotted this exact same watch on 
Genevieve's wrist. I know some of you will be like, yeah, right. Four million naira my button, you know. <laughs> but please trust me, that's a Rolex watch. Dear Genevieve, I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> this is so funny. Linda Keji, she's so funny. But remember, a long time ago, she had a row with uh, Olamide, and Olamide actually lambasted her on Twitter. This what was going on on Twitter. I even thought, yes, Olamide went a little bit too far because he was saying that you never supported me from day one, blah, blah, blah. So why are you putting me down now? You get me? If you can't support me, don't put me down, blah, 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 blah. He was very disrespect, disrespectful to uh, Linda KG. But, you know, this is what you get when you're a blogger anyway because you have to blog. You have to talk about people. You have to write about people. So you're not going to be friend, friends of everybody. Not everybody will like you, basically. Okay, let me quickly move on to another interesting story. This is from Nigeria again. Nigerian BC Alimi, named among most influential gay persons in the world. I think this is very interesting to me because Nigeria is yet to legalize homosexuality. So, but this person is very, very famous. Nigerian LGBT activist BC Alimi has been named among the top 100 influential gay persons in the world according to a newly published list of 2014's leading LGBT figures worldwide. BC was listed for being the first Nigerian to come out as gay on national television and is sitting on the number 77 spot. Wow! This report was published by The Guardian on the weekend that gay pride marches were taking place across the globe. The title claimed its world pride power list came at a time where homosexuality remains, 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 remains illegal in 80 countries. Adding that, the least is a chance to celebrate what has been and is being done to promote equality. Yes, so, hmm, you see that? Okay, I'm going to go to something very 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 dramatic or what shall i say ironic because we lost a soldier in nigeria and according to the allegation this soldier was killed by a brt driver so what happened next the rest of the soldiers took to the street and set buses, BRT buses ablaze. Wow. This incident happened on Friday morning. A report came to that social radio show that the that the follow, that following the death of an army officer who was killed by a BRT driver, dozens of soldiers took over Ikorodu Road in Lagos, set BRT buses on fire, shooting periodically, harassing commuters, and also smashed mobile phones of the bystanders who tried to capture their acts. I believe six buses, BRT buses, were reported to have been burnt by this Nigerian army you know, just trying to take revenge on their fellow comrade who was killed. This is why I don't understand, right? I think, correct me if I'm wrong, this is a lawless act, trust me. Because there's no reason why the army should take to the street and start burning buses and start killing. You understand? Because we've, come on, in the Western country, Including UK here, we've seen um, was it was the army that was um, 
that was slaughtered by these two um, well, British, Nigerian born British or British kids who in in Woolwich we've seen that and to be quite honest we didn't see British army going to the street and start killing everybody, start carrying, carrying Nigerians and start burning Nigerians or burning Nigerian cows. You understand? Or go to the uh, parents of the the, the the boys that don't they are committed their atrocities and start burning their the, the parents' cars or the houses. We don't see that. And this is exactly what I'm saying that Nigeria needs to copy the Western world. You can't go around just burning houses. You know, BRT, that's not yours, that's government. That's government property. You can't go around doing that. So, this, this, I don't know, I don't know, but I'm sure, and actually, not I'm sure, I, I actually had a, um, the governor of Lagos State actually condemn the act you know and i don't know what he's gonna do about it but something needs to be done and all this jungle justice putting the law into your hands it needs to be stopped it need this needs to be addressed in nigeria and the rest of the african nation and also other third world countries around the world i'm sure it's not only africa that um, do that Okay, world sexist women are from Brazil. Sexist men from Australia. How could it be? Well, let me see what place Nigerian women and men will be among the rest of the sexist men around the world. <laughs> Sound like I'm joking, Abby. Okay, well, you watch. <laughs> Travel dating website means travel as members both men and women to rate the nationalities they find sexist in a dating partner the answers reveal a preference for women from south america and men from down under with sexiness found in countries everywhere between i'm going to be telling you number 10 that's dutch the sexist nationalities for men number 10 is dutch number nine is canadian eight brazilian seven irish six american five spanish four scottish three british two italian and number one australian imagine not even any african nation there and i remember I remember, if I'm not mistaken, that a Nigerian was Miss World once in my lifetime. The sexist nationalities for women um, Canada came 10. Number 9 is South Africa, thank God. Well, it's still number 9, but it's still something is better than nothing. And number 8 is Bulgaria, and number 7 is Australia, 6 Spanish. Five Filipino and um, four British. <laughs> Look where we are, British number four in the world. Three Colombia, two Russian, and number one Brazilian. I think Brazilian women are hard though, to be quite honest. Anyway, where's Nigeria? Biko, <laughs> Nigerano de Dio. Very, very, very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. Okay, I have to say to everyone that I'm still uh, mourning the death of my good artist and a friend, Kefi, Miss Kokoroko. I don't know, before she died, two weeks before she died, we actually chatted. You know, we talk about music and uh, promoting the new single, Dem Guto, you know, uh, I thought ah, she's done a fantastic job on this one, and she was sure that this was going to be here as well, you know, she actually told me this is one of the best tracks that she's ever done, and she really put her heart into it, you know, and then all of a sudden, death took her away.
from us. Very sad. Well, meet Ara, the female musician who predicted Kefi's death. She's claiming that she, uh, she knew about her death and she actually confronted her. Let me read the story. Her name is Ara, Ara or Ara. And you all know her as a female drummer and singer. But when, when did she add spiritual things to her acts? Me, I don't know. Ara, who is a friend to late Kefi, disclosed on a best of Nollywood's chat forum that she had a dream concerning Kefi's death and that she even called her to pray hard to avert it. In our words, I want to use this forum to appeal to my colleagues in the music industry. Less than two years ago, I had a dream about Kefi and immediately called her and narrated it to her. I also appealed to her not to make a joke of it. The rest is history. Early this year, I had a dream and contacted Efe of Now music, music and is the only one I could call and told him to please organize a forum for all musicians to assemble and pray against death amongst us. Hmm. It's sad really sad and I'm so happy that you know these people just can get together and pray for each other it's like they're watching each other's progress or if you like back bad man notorious <laughs> notorious prisoner impregnate four prison guards imagine four prison guards and the man is in the prison it's a prisoner I find this very, very, I don't know whether to laugh or, I don't know, how did it happen? Somebody who's in the prison, who should even be banned from having sex, but he managed to impregnate four prison guards. How did he do it? You will hear. Maryland gang member, Tavon White is accused of running a scheme to smuggle contraband into the prison by persuading 13 female prison guards from behind bars. But for four of those women, the persuasion included getting it in and eventually getting pregnant. The federal indictment says Stephen White has been charged in the plot to smuggle drugs cell phones and other contraband into the Baltimore jail and other corrections facilities along with the prison guards, six of his fellow inmates and five others with gang ties who allegedly operated outside the jails. The indictment also says the ring involves sex between the inmates and guards which led to four of the officers becoming pregnant by whites. The leader of a jailhouse gang called the Black Gorilla Family. They even have name for themselves. White is accused of corrupting the female officers through personal and sexual relationships and other bribes. Eventually, he convinced them to join his ring. <laughs> it's, 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 I don't know. I don't know how he does it. But he must be a smooth criminal smooth criminal to convince all these prison guards. I don't know why should prison guards you know be having re this intimate relationship with prisoner. I mean there won't be authority. The next minute you will hear the the prisoners you know breaking jail because they will cause riots. They don't respect the prisoners I mean the prison guards anymore because they are already sleeping with them in the first place. You know, anyway, still on the matter, America. 50 Cent claims Beyonce has mad odor. <laughs> I mean, that's my yeah. before, before the YouTube actually confirmed that I've got bad mad odor, odor as well. <laughs> Imagine, how did he know? Well, I know that you don't have to kiss somebody before you can smell their breath, but... How close was he to Beyonce to have smell her breath? 
breast, a uh, as a breast, breath, breath, breast, breath. Where did I get that from? Imagine, eh? And I'm sure Beyonce is not tempted to kiss him. I'm definitely sure because she's going man, isn't it? She's got Jay Z, you know, bad boy rapper and CEO, you know. So there's no reason, but this is what 50 Cent is saying. This has got to be one of the funniest ever story I've ever heard. Trust me, <laughs> I'm laughing a lot, Papa. The rapper was on the segment of a TV show watch. What happens live, known as Split the Fifth on Bravo. When interviewer asked his honest opinion on several issues, as expected, with 50 Cent, a trio shades at people and this dirt as much as possible. I wonder what how or yeah how Beyonce we feel like when they find out about this story what fifty cent about a breath. I can surely tell you that she ain't gonna be happy. Mm. Okay, let's move on. There's a cold war currently brewing between Nollywood actress Tony Aymaku Johnson and Stella Damascus. And whatever it is, it's not pleasant at all. I don't know what connection could Tony Aymaku and Stella Damascus have together. What could be causing this war? Insiders say that Tony and a senior colleague have not been seen eye to eye. The issue is gradually gathering momentum and with the allegation that Stella broke the marriage between another actress, Doris Simeon, and her husband, Daniel Ademinoko, and has since moved in with the guy in America. There have been relentless war of words, especially from the Yoruba sector, of Nollywood. Many Yoruba actresses are said to have ganged up against Stella, claiming she practically kicked Doris out of Daniel's house and took over her child. This may be the reason many are pointing accusing fingers to his way, saying that a rant's Twitter are directed at Stella. You must have known that all these celebrities nowadays they use Twitter to commit atrocity, to rein in certain nation that to cause to abuse. Is that what Twitter was made for? Was Twitter actually inventing for people to be dissing or ranting at each other? I don't think so. Anyway. Read the tweet here and also the meanings of decoded tags according to experts who know how to decode such tags. <laughs> Listen to meaning Stella's visa in the state is about to get expired. Bring our son back. Meaning Stella should return the receiving son who is obviously to his friend. Attention seeker. These are the calls, so meaning she's only looking for attention. Love you still. That's very understandable, Abby. <laughs> anyway, let's go to another story about the top Nigerian celebrities, which husbands are younger than them. That's what that one is saying. We must not accept love wherever we must accept love, sorry. We must accept love wherever it finds us, right? Well, this women certain certainly think so. Banishing traditional living out their dreams, love lives. <laughs> and yes, you know them all well well. I'm going to tell you all these people, the private lives of our very own Nigerian celebrities, we 
daring age gaps between them and their women. Can you get somebody already before I even mention names? Of course, Deola Ayeni and Dari at Alade. Topping the list in no particular order is Dari at Alade, his wife Deola Ayeni. Deola is eight years older than Dari, yet they've been married for over five good years with lovely kids. Bravo. So, age is nothing but number. No pressures at all. Everybody has sometimes find what works for him or her. That is saying, I am perfectly happy with my marriage to my wife and I will absolutely have no problems or pressures of any sort. Love a boy. It's good. I like the difference. Ah, another one is Lola and Peter Okoye. Next on the list is uh, Peter Okoye of P Square, musical duo, and Lola Omotayo. Lola is said to be six years older than Peter. Peter and his twin brother were born on the 18th of November 1981. Who? Just a year before I graduated from secondary school. I'm far older than them. Trust me. Mm. Peter is an old soul and he always tells me that I'm like a 23 year old. Age is just a number. Right now you can see it around the world. Demi Moore, Usher and some known people. If it's happening for them, even in Nigeria here, they are dating people far older than their age. So we shouldn't base it on the age factor. It doesn't make me feel like it's younger than me. Well done. Okay, the next one on the list of men dating younger women. I mean, yes. Men dating older men, older women, sorry. Men, younger men dating older women. Did I say that right? I hope it comes out right. If it doesn't, you know what I mean, though. Because we are talking now about Toyi, Lawadi, and Trigger. Another couple who are proudly flying the flag for older man slash younger man relationship is celebrity stylist and fashion designer Toy Lawane who is 32 years old and engaged to a 22 year old boo trigger case almost a whole lot of 10 years difference so hmm, that one now wow the couple who proudly refer to themselves as Niger's Rihanna and Chris Brown they both welcomed their first baby a couple of months ago Although Tony has an eight year old daughter from a previous relationship. Wow. Tony responded thus about their age difference. Congratulations on your second child. How are you combining motherhood and work? She was asked. Thank you. It's been very tedious. It's not only about having a maid. Sometimes you need to be present at things like PTA meetings that need personal attention. But Trigger has been wonderful and understanding. He helps a lot. Do you feel bothered by the age difference between you and Trigger? Big question. She answered, not really. <laughs> Okay, the next people, you're going to love this because this man, people love him. They just like to joke about him. Comedians will kill him when it's, when they're doing comedy show. trust me. It's all about his big eyeballs. There's something about that big eyeballs. It's one of my friends on BB actually, we chat now and then. It's Shagun Arize's ex-wife, actress, and NJ Manze who remarried last year disclosing an interview that her husband is few years younger than her. Here, 
Your husband seems to be young and fresh. He's younger than you. Obviously. Yeah, yes, he is. For a few years. Few. My husband and I do not share up to five years difference. And he's not bother about it. Ah, if that was for you, go ahead. Hmm. What's wrong with that? Age ain't nothing but the number. Aliyah said it before she died. Queen Ure Okezi and Soli Babade here. Before their separation, they were so much in love. Despite the fact that Queen Uri was 11 years older than Soli Baba. In one of their major interviews years ago, when they were still very much in love, they both addressed their white age gap thus. Did you consider his age at the first time? Uri, no. Did he tell you? Uri, well, he added a few years to his age. Hmm. What do you have to say about the reports that you are fond of dating older women? So, E. Baba, I don't have anything to say about it. It is my life. I have always known that it will happen. I'm too big. That's why I try people that are older than me. I told my parents when I was growing up that I don't know then. I had two serious relationships and all of them were older than me. I knew right from their scratch that I was going to end up with someone older than me. <laughs> oh my God. Never mind. Congrats. You've done it. What is wrong with it though? There's nothing. There's there shouldn't be anything wrong with people. You can you can hear in the background that my daughter and her friend are just in there. You know. Chatting. Chatting about everything. You can hear them screaming. Anyway, I think I'm gonna go and put some order on them. Tell them you can't be they just happy. Kiss a kiss. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching me today. That's all I've got for you today. I hope you join me next time right here on That's a Soap Radio Show. I hope you enjoy it. I've enjoyed it. I've had fun. I love gossip. Gossip is my life. Trust me. Take care. Ciao.